Student loan forgiveness is canceled, but 804,000 borrowers just got 39 billion in automatic loan forgiveness. One day I'm going to learn how to say borrowers on the first time, but how can this be? I'm here today with the student loan doctor, the first black woman owned student loan repay com repayment company and a national student loan debt expert. Welcome to the show, Sonia. Thank you so much for having me. My pleasure, my pleasure. So I need you to help a brother out here. First, let's start mm -hmm. off with, for people who are learning for the first time, what's the mm -hmm. difference between student loan forgiveness and income-driven repayment plans? Um, a big difference. So the student loan forgiveness programs that are available would allow you to get your student loan debt totally wiped clear, eradicated through programs that the government has set up. And so hopefully we get into that conversation today of who could be eligible, what they need to do, uh, because the reality is there's, uh, I, I would say maybe 10 to 20 more million people that are gonna be able to take advantage of these forgiveness programs um, if they're informed. An income-driven repayment plan, well, that's what most of the country is going to be enrolling into as we go into repayment in October. So that helps keep your student loan payment manageable, affordable, and sometimes even a requirement of a forgiveness plan just depending. So there's a lot of work to discover. Hopefully we get into that conversation today. I know that's a major question, so I'm gonna come back and hit it. Uh, you just said it right there, but student loan payments restart. So interest starts in September and payments are mm -hmm. gonna be due again, when? So October, the thing is we gotta start preparing now because interest does start in September. There's a lot of verbiage about what payment plans could be available and the best fit you'll be able to elect into those payment plans very, very soon. Uh, but October, they are looking for their first payment. <laughs> uh, if you're new here, you're listening to Life After Debt with the Marcus Garrett, where we have help overworked professionals just like yourself find easier ways to earn more money and keep more of the money you earn, which is what we're talking about today. When those repayment plans start, they're estimating it's going to be about a 5% budget increase. So what are you advising people right now? They've been, many people anyway, have been without student loan payments for almost three years. So like, what are you telling people either to prepare or what should they be looking to do? Yeah. Next? So here's the thing. There's going to be something that the Department of Education has implemented that will be from October 1st, 2023 to the end of September, 2024. And it's called the on-ramp program. And it's not something that you necessarily need to enroll into, but if you have any hardship, the government is promising to not uh, penalize people by uh, harming their credit profile or uh, putting them into the process to go into default. And so if you're having any issues or any troubles with your student loan payment, because it is something that no one has been paying really on in three years, um, you just want to communicate this to your lender. Now, they're promising that even if you don't communicate, they will still look out. But I still think that you have to keep an eye on your credit report and you want to keep an eye on your student loan profile um, just because we don't know if everyone got the memo. Right. So. Um, yes, there's going to be some, some provisions in place that are going to help people that are struggling with payment. But the other reality is too, Marcus, we got to audit the budget. We got to see what maybe can get cut back because we know that this student loan payment is getting cut on. And then they also, I teach my community, we have to see what else we can do in terms of bringing in additional income because a student loan payment for three years has been totally factored out of the budget. Let's just be honest, keep it real. So we have to figure out how do we refactor it in? And sometimes we need to factor in making some more money to take a uh, place of this payment. So what, if any advice, is that gonna differ for the person that has uh, private and public federal student loans? Or is there any different, same advice? Well, no, so the thing is, there hasn't been any relief uh, stated yet for private loan debt, which is very unfortunate because there are uh, millions of Americans that are struggling with private loans. Um, the only thing that there is that I would say could be a benefit um, is that if your credit profile is in the right place, there are a lot of companies that are suggesting you to refinance your private loans with them so that you can get a lower locked in interest rate for a private loan. Um, if you're unable to pay it off, you really want to look into locking yourself into a fixed interest rate. And the markets, we're doing some interesting work on our platform, and I can't speak about it just yet because I want to make sure I have all the details. But we're looking at a way that if you're looking to buy your first home or you're refinancing a mortgage, there may be a way to tie in your student loan debt to that purchase. So really, really exciting that you can kind of 
knock out two birds with one stone, if you will. So you got to have me back on once we flesh that out. Um, I want to make sure I have every nook and cranny that I can explain because we know that this population of people, millennials and uh, those a little older, were, they were looking at home buying. And so what, what better way to maybe get rid of your student loan debt with the purchase you were going to make anyway? I appreciate that and your open invite to come back on the show. Uh, I do have, and I think this is even going to be for me a clarifying question there. So mm -hmm. let's say I have a federal loan. I just do for ease of math. I've got a $30,000 federal loan, average uh, student loan, and I move, again, keep it for simple, half of that, 15000 over to private loans. Isn't that going to remove, I just want people to be cautionary, that's going to remove any rights or forgiveness or future conversations. So now I've got 15000 in private that I might lock in at a cheaper rate and 15000 in federal. So the next eligible round will just be that remaining 50,000 for federal or excuse me, 15,000 for federal. Correct me if I've yeah. spoken yes. incorrectly. Yes. So here's the thing. I always tell borrowers to be where moving their federal loan debt to private loan. And I know that um, our mathematicians and those that have good credit are like, well, the federal interest rate is 5%. But if I go over here, it's 1%. But let's read the fine print. Is it 1% really and for how long? Because when you're working in the space of a private loan, I'm, I'm just going to tell you, Marcus, it can change with the weather. Like uh, things in the economy change private loan interest rates, especially if it's not guaranteed fixed and most aren't. And so the challenge here is that we've seen this even right before the pandemic. Oh, I had some clients that were sick. They moved their debt to private loan debt they didn't get a chance to take advantage of the pandemic pause and pay directly on principal and get rid of it. So if you can avoid moving your loan to private debt, please do, uh, because there could be other programs and provisions that are being created daily, especially with this administration in mind. I would sit still with my federal loan debt, to be honest, uh, during these times, because you don't know what's going to come up that you could take advantage of. I got three more categories that I want to hit here. We actually talked about them before we started recording. You hit a few mm -hmm. of those. But under this income driven repayment, just so folks have it, I'm going to hit again that that's payments going to start again in October, depending where you mm -hmm. skipped in this video. <laughs> uh, borrowers will be eligible for loan forgiveness after 240 months. So we're talking 20 years. This isn't like an overnight plan or anything like that. But yeah. any debt that is still around at that time, uh, right. those discharges will start in 30 days and they will be notifying people. So if you didn't get in that first email, they're notifying people every two weeks. We're talking about 800,000 borrowers. So even the government can get behind. Uh, uh, those will still be coming out so monitor your inbox however you told me right before we were starting this podcast that they've made one change already the repay plan formally mm -hmm. will now become the save plan can you tell us a little bit about what the save plan yeah is? so so exciting right um i get really excited about these topics so they uh had a plan called repay that allowed you to save at the 10 percent discretionary income mark and even discretionary income has been revised as well and so now the new plan is called save and this is going to allow you to save at a five percent margin and this is particularly for loans that are not graduate loans so any undergraduate loans can be enrolled into the save plan um, and so what's really cool about this is that they also have added another caveat so okay here it goes if you're enrolled into the save plan those loans in particular will not be accruing interest while in repayment let me say that again so it's big news so you know how like we're making payments marcus and then it's still accruing interest it's weird so you can never get on top of your loans right. so with the save plan they're promising to pause interest if you're actively in repayment does that make sense so that's a really really cool feature that's happening with this new plan um and then the other thing is is that you know there are some loopholes and it would be too much to explain now but we're going to try to do it on our platform keep that in you know prayer but we have to figure this thing out that there are even opportunities for those that have parent plus loans to do a double consolidation before the year is over that they maybe have an opportunity to enroll into the save plan so we'll see um marcus there's a lot of things happening i think that they're trying to make repayment affordable easy um stress-free burden like to allow people to get on top of this loan debt because the ball was dropped as it relates to Biden loan forgiveness for sure and you talked a little bit about this 
will people will these like what we're talking about here will these be the options that are presented in their inbox and then they can opt into these various plan options or basically how do they choose the plan that they want to be on? yeah so the government uh department of education put out a notice that said if you were already in the repay plan before uh the pandemic pause they will opt you automatically into the save plan if you're eligible so um, I know that our platform, we're going to do a lot of work around helping people manually enroll because we don't trust automatic systems around here. So it's just millions of Americans that you will flip a switch and they, no, it's, it's not even, it sounds really good, Marcus. So um, once this is available within the next few weeks, you want to go to studentaid.gov and click on income driven repayment application. I say a few weeks from now, if we're, if we're doing this airing, in real time, you know, mid August, it should be available. You want to go ahead and release that uh, application at that point, or if you consolidate your loans around that time, um, you could be eligible then. Um, the challenge here is that we just literally have to make sure that student loan borrowers are paying attention to announcements. Some things are coming by email, but a lot aren't. And even the last round of people that were supposed to be eligible for loan forgiveness, even they missed announcements that their loans were forgiven like literally marcus i did a class and i said you guys should go check your accounts like right now i'll pause 20 people had their loans forgiven nice so the last round of forgiveness wasn't even announced and so what i think is happening is because we're revamping going into repayment a lot of phone calls a lot of you know that let's just put this in perspective at these uh loan center call centers for lenders there are only 20 to 40 people working. Millions are calling. When you do the numbers, the customer service isn't going to add up. So you got to be on top of this yourself. Yeah, I'm trying to think of the last time I answered a phone call on purpose. So I, I'm, yeah. an, I'm in a fortunate position where I'm not in this uh, category for student loan forgiveness, <laughs> but uh, I yeah. might have missed a phone call or two. They would have to chase me down, I can tell you that. Yeah. Uh, there's a few others that you were talking about. Uh, I'll hit them so people know what's coming up. I also keep mm -hmm. you paying attention to the video. So we're going to talk about borrower's defense and public service loan forgiveness. Uh, so let's start with the borrower's defense. What is that? Can you expand on that for us? So borrower's defense is the uh, known precedent for it. There's about 200 schools that the Department of Education declared they had illegal practices for enrollment, uh, illegal practices for ongoing uh, attendance, and illegal practices for saying you're going to graduate with an amazing job with amazing pay. And so these schools were found guilty, and the Department of Education said, hey, we're going to refund your loans, we're going to refund your loan payments, if you went to one of these institutions. There was a deadline around this, and the unfortunate thing is it came and went. And so then there was a gray period of people that found out about it, and then they were told, well, no, your loans are too old, or you went too long ago. But then, Parkis, they just changed it again. I can't make this stuff up. Sound they like said, hey, come back. Well, now I'm gonna accept you. Anytime you went to one of these institutions, you just have to do the new application. So Marcus, I feel like every day on my platform, I'm like, hey, you, when we talked last year, they said deny your, your, so people are like getting discouraged. They're irritated. When you be irritated and discouraged, like you just told me when I tried to do this 30 minute application, I would get denied. Now you're telling me to go back and do the new version. So, you know, here's what I tell people it's business. Get out your emotions, do the application, get your loans forgiven, possibly get a check back. So if you went to one of those schools uh, that was approved in the Cardona case uh, recently, just Google 200 schools approved for borrower's defense. It'll come up the list. If you went to one of those institutions or a subsidy of it, you got to do the application on studentaid.gov. And you also said a lot of people and maybe even present company <laughs> get these two confused. So I want to talk about the difference between what we've discussed this entire time and public service loan forgiveness, PSLF. Mm -hmm. So Biden loan forgiveness is where we were looking to see if you want to receive 10000 or 20000 in loan forgiveness. That got denied by the Supreme Court. The Biden loan forgiveness program may be reinstituted. Or they're going to try again through the Higher Education Act of 1965. Now, I'm going to say this, and I try to keep my opinions to myself, uh, but it was very foolish, I believe, for the administration to go the first round 
with this for loan forgiveness through the uh, the pandemic uh, act that Trump instituted. Basically, the Heroes Act allowed anyone that was uh, in a financial suffering, if you will, because of student loans, to take uh, precedence of the pause. Well, the Biden administration said, hey, we're going to slide our $20,000 $10,000 per person into this act. That's not what the act was for. I know that and I don't even create acts. <laughs> so when I saw it come out, try to be positive. I was like, it's not going to go through, but we'll see. So it didn't go through because it wasn't the right act, but there is an act, Marcus. That's why this is radical called the Higher Education Act of 1965 that was created by Lyndon B. Johnson that says with the stroke of a pen, the president and the secretary of education can modify, eradicate, and really dismiss student loans. So we should think to ourselves, why wouldn't we go through the, who are the lawyers? Why didn't we go through this act in the first place? So they're gonna go through it again, and it could take up to a year to approve. So this goes back to what I said before. I would not be switching my loans from federal to private because it could go through all reality. All of the forgiveness programs that we talked about public service loan forgiveness, borrower's loan forgiveness. They're through the Higher Education Act of 1965. Why didn't we do the other one? <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> so I hope my rest of my opinion. But uh, stay tuned. It, it may be possible to get this through. I appreciate you. And that's why I wanted the people to stay tuned to the end. And we are nearing the wrap. Student loan forgiveness. So we hit the update, but also want to talk about, uh, so I hit some of the facts. Y'all know I'm an auditor by trade. So after 10 years, that'll mostly be community college students. They're going to forgive up to 12,000. They estimate 85% of community college students will have their debt forgiven in 10 years. They're going to forgive after 20 years. Don't do my math. I think that's 300 payments, 240 payments, somewhere in that range. Any debt remaining on income driven repayment plans and then 25 years for graduate students. So Sonia, my question mm -hmm. to you, and like you said, you can contain your opinion or release your opinion. What's mm -hmm. next for student loan forgiveness? So I'm looking forward to seeing some radical changes that they're going to update and make with the public service loan forgiveness program. If there was ever a program to be a part of, to find your way into, it would be public service loan forgiveness. They're making uh, the rules just so relaxed. Um, they're even some hidden talk about shortening the time period that you have to work in the field. I think this is a great program for anyone that is in a public service position that works for a nonprofit, owns a nonprofit. They think that there's going to be a lot of attention put into the loan forgiveness programs that are already approved that don't have to be reviewed or um, recognized by the Supreme Court. Does that make sense? So yes. we want to figure out what already is on the table and how we can opt in. I think we will see millions more forgiven if we just start being wiser about what's already available. And folks, I know y'all have questions, so drop them below. As we've said, we're already going to have Sonia, the student loan doctor, back on the show. But Sonia, these people can find me and everything they need to know in the description below. Be sure to hit mm -hmm. the subscribe button wherever that's floating around on your screen and let them know where they can find out more about you. Yeah, so we have a lot of fun on Instagram, the student loan doctor. There's always videos. There's postings. We do a lot of free classes, Marcus, like I don't think anyone's out, te out teaching me. Like I am doing a class most days, midday and evening, because I know we cater to an audience that it may be listening at lunch or when they're home. So follow us on Instagram, The Student Loan Doctor. Uh, we have a YouTube series that we cater to as well, and we update periodically. Um, and if you need assistance and help, reach out to us through our website, drpleasehelpme.com. Uh, we are a consulting practice as well. So we're back into the full swing of things. If we can assist you, we'd love to help. But a lot of this information that we give is free and DIY. You can figure it out from there. Um, but we've got you if it's a little overwhelming. And I wouldn't blame you. This is changing every day, literally. <laughs> Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Hey guys, I got some really good news. I'm back at it. So listen, there's going to be a one-time account adjustment that's going to be awarded to your account between August and December. So if you were in repayment of any sorts, 
Whether it was a qualified payment or not, they're going to count that. If you were in forbearance 12 months at a time, up to 36 months, they're going to give you credit for that as well. So if you look at this next slide, I give you details on how to log into studentaid.gov to take a look at your repayment status, your forbearance history, all of that, so you can know if credit is coming your way. So what does this mean? This means that a lot of you that are just months away from being done with public service loan forgiveness, you are coming up on loan completion between August and December. Hello, somebody. And then also those that have been in repayment, depending on your payment plan, 20 years or 25 years, in the next few weeks to a month, you're going to also receive your loans 100% forgiven. So you saw that post about 39 billion people that are coming into automatic loan forgiveness that's you. So I am wishing you guys well. This is good news. I know we need some. As we go into repayment, I want you guys to be keeping a close eye on your account, studentaid.gov, or log into your lender's account. And let's just get an eye for what's happening and what credits may be coming your way.